Hello and welcome to Anand Roll. In today's class, we will move on to the next question. Price determination in monopoly. So, this is LAQ term. What is monopoly? Explain how the price is determined under monopoly. Okay. So, the introduction is the word mono means single and poly means seller. Monopoly is a type of imperfect market where there is only one seller for a good or service which has no close substitutes. Okay, so monopoly comes under the category of imperfect market and there will be only one seller for a particular good or service in a monopoly market and because of that there are no close substitutes for the commodity. Because there are no close substitute for that particular commodity or service, all the buyers they have to purchase one day from that single seller. So that is another reason in monopoly market there is only one seller. And this monopoly is derived from the Latin word mono means single and poly means seller. And another thing you have to note down, especially the CPT students, is the cross elasticity of demand for a products sold by the monopolist happens to be zero. Under perfect competition, since the products are perfect substitutes, by uh, because the products sold by all the sellers are identical, then the cross elasticity is infinity. Whereas in the case of monopoly, since there are no substitute then it is zero and for your information in actual practice it is difficult to find a pure monopoly unless it is for example indian railways indian railways is a government monopoly the reserve bank of india only the reserve bank of india is authorized to issue the currency notes that is a government monopoly public monopoly so unless it is like a public monopoly it is very very difficult to find pure monopoly in the actual practice okay because it is very difficult to have a single seller in the market so perfect competition is one extreme and monopoly is another extreme okay now moving on to the definition in the words of Villas, monopoly is represented by a market situation in which there is a single seller of a product for which there are no close substitutes okay this single seller is unaffected by and does not affect the prices and outputs of other products sold in the economy because since whatever the commodity offered for sale whatever the services provided by a monopolist is unique so and there are no substitutes for this commodity or service then he also does not affect the other sellers through his price and output and he is also not affected by other sellers output or price in the market okay that's what this definition means okay now moving on to the what are all the characteristics of monopoly so the characteristics of monopoly first and foremost there is only single seller in the market second one no close substitutes for this commodity and the third point point c strong barriers for the entry of new firms or sellers barriers means what barriers means restrictions new firms cannot enter into the market see we have seen in perfect market isn't it free entry and exit of firms new firms can easily enter into the market and old firms can easily leave the market but whereas in case of monopoly strong barriers or the restrictions or the new firms new seller cannot enter into the market and point d firm and industry or same now what is the meaning of industry group of firms constitute an industry isn't it so what is firm is nothing but seller group of sellers if there are so many sellers each and every seller is one firm so all those sellers and all those group of firms they constitute an industry but whereas in case of monopoly there is only one seller so he, that only one seller happens to be the one firm so that one firm happens to be the entire industry in other words there is no distinction between firm and industry in monopoly okay then point e producer can either control the price or supply but not both simultaneously that means what even though he is a uh, single seller he cannot determine both price and quantity simultaneously if he fixes the price output will be decided in the market if he decides to uh, sell this much amount of output price will be determined in the market let me explain to you with the help of a simple diagram that particular point see on the uh, x axis we are representing the quantity and y axis price and revenue okay so this is x axis quantity y axis price and revenue 
Sino, the producer, he faces a downward sloping demand curve. So the price in monopoly is not like under perfect competition where the market demand intersects market supply. That is not the way the price is determined under monopoly because he himself is going to fix the price of the commodity he or she. So based on the revenue curve he is facing, he or she will fix the price. Now uh, for your information, the demand curve of the consumer is the average revenue curve for the producer. For the time being understand, demand curve of the consumer is equal to AR curve of the seller and average revenue is equal to price. This I will explain to you in a short while. See, that means for demand curve, law of demand, all of all of, all of you know, isn't it? The consumers will be willing to purchase more units only when the price decreases. So the demand curve slopes downwards. So whatever the price which we are paying, that is the revenue for the producer, isn't it? So our demand curve, the consumer's demand curve is the seller's revenue curve. So now he is facing a downward, downward sloping revenue curve because the demand curve slopes downward. So he is facing a downward sloping average revenue curve. Okay. Now since the average revenue curve is sloping downwards, the marginal revenue curve will also slopes downwards. So now the point is, the seller can either fix the price or he can fix the quantity but not both simultaneously. Okay, so let us assume for the time being the seller wants to charge a high price OP. So this is the price he is deciding to sell it in, in the market. This is the price he wants to fix. Okay, so he, is, he or she has decided the price. Now what is the output he can sell in the market at this price because the price is high. The Normally when the price is high, the consumers will demand less, isn't it? So how much the consumers they want to purchase that will be decided in the market or in other words how it will be decided wherever the Q. So that means what at OP price the seller can sell only OQ amount of output because the consumers are willing to purchase only OQ amount of output when the price is OP. Suppose if the seller wants to sell more, okay, so instead of fixing the price, the seller has decided he wants to sell more units of output, okay. So now he has decided he wants to sell OQ1 amount of output. So now if he wants to sell OQ1 amount of output, at what price he can sell that OQ1 amount of output? So that will be decided in the market. How it is decided in the market, extend this line to AR curve because average revenue curve is the demand curve also and that is equal to price. So now P1 will be the price or in other words the seller if he wants to sell more he has to decrease the price from P1 to P2 P1 he has to sacrifice the uh, that, that high price okay or in, to put it very simply the seller cannot fix the price as OP and sell OQ1 amount of output. The seller cannot decide both. The seller cannot decide that he or she wants to uh, sell more in the market at higher price because one will be decided by the consumer. So even though it is a single seller in the market, the seller can decide only one at a particular point of time. So that is what this point E uh, refers. Producer can either control the price or supply but not both simultaneously. And point F, the monopolist aims at maximum profit with minimum cost. So any rational seller, they will aim at maximum profit with minimum cost. Now these are all the characteristics of monopoly and up to here you might even get for 5 marks. What are the features or what are all the characteristics of monopoly you might even get for 5 marks. Now we will move on to the 10, 10 marks question. You have to explain about the equilibrium and price determination with the help of a table, with the help of a diagram. There are no tables in this answer. So you have to explain it with the help of a diagram. So the uh, next part of the answer, equilibrium and price determination under monopoly. Okay. So the monopolist can sell more units of a good only by reducing the price. Thus she faces the downward sloping 
revenue curves okay so uh, we are already e explained that that if the seller wants to sell more units of the commodity he or she has to decrease the price of the commodity okay so i told you what is the connection between average revenue and uh, price so the seller wants to increase the sales the quantity the price has to come down so that's why the facing the seller is facing the downward sloping curve so that is the first point and then what is the connection between average revenue and price now simple let me give you a simple example okay what is the total revenue so the total revenue is the total output uh, total receipts received by the seller after selling all the units in the market so total revenue is equal to how do we calculate the total revenue price into quantity isn't it so that is the total revenue now what is the average revenue average revenue is revenue per unit of output sold total revenue is the total sale proceeds of the seller after selling all the units in the market average revenue is revenue for one unit of output sold so what is the formula for average revenue total revenue divided by q so the total revenue divided by q is the average revenue so now we already know that total revenue is p into q so p into q divided by q q q gets cancelled then is equal to price so average revenue in any market will be not only in monopoly in any market will always be equal to the price of the commodity okay so that's why i mentioned here how the price is it is not the market forces of demand and supply intersection like the perfect competition it's here if the producer decides the output as q then wherever this uh, out, uh, output line touches the average revenue curve because the average revenue is equal to price so that is the price the producer will fix so that's why he is coming across op okay and if the producer decides to sell oq1 amount of commodity then wherever this output line touches the average revenue curve the price will be decided in the market as p1 because average revenue is equal to demand curve also so it indirectly indicates that at oq1 level of output the consumers are willing to pay p1 amount of price at oq level of output the consumers are willing to pay p op amount of price okay so this is how the price is determined now the question is at this price how what is the equilibrium position of the uh, seller okay we have to know equilibrium position and whether he is getting profits or losses okay for that now what is the there, there are two conditions for equilibrium okay so the conditions for equilibrium is mc must be equal to mr now what is the marginal cost uh, is mc what is the marginal cost additional cost see you have to understand equilibrium is the position of rest okay so the position of rest in the sense that equilibrium is equal to position of rest so that is he neither he is satisfied with that level of output he neither wants to increase the output nor decrease the output that when that seller reaches that particular position then the seller is in the e position of equilibrium so there are two conditions for that equilibrium to be reached for the seller so the first condition must be the marginal cost must be equal to marginal revenue additional cost for producing additional output must be equal to additional revenue the producer is getting after selling the commodity in the market 
so mc must be equal to mr and the second condition even though it is not very compulsory in monopoly mc curve should cut the mr curve from below okay so these are all the two conditions for the producer to be in equilibrium so then based on that well after attaining the equilibrium position we have to know whether the producer is getting normal profits abnormal profits or losses okay so now let me explain to you that this this has to be explained in the help of a diagram and the way you are draw, drawing the diagram is the entire answer okay so i have already drawn the diagram i will explain to you i will mention it here in what way what are all the steps you have to follow when you are drawing the diagram along with that i will explain to you the answer also see first as usual draw the diagram uh, the x axis and y axis x axis we are representing quantity of output and y axis we are representing cost revenue and price all those things are represented in y axis okay so the, after drawing the x axis and y axis the first thing what you have to draw is the average revenue curve so average revenue curve this is step 1 hmm? first draw the average revenue curve okay now after draw it's a downward sloping curve i already explained to you if it, the side of faces the downward sloping revenue curves okay now after drawing the average revenue curve then draw the marginal revenue curve since the average revenue is sloping downwards then the marginal revenue will also slope downwards so what is the explanation here the cell ar is the average revenue curve mr is the marginal revenue curve they both slope downwards because the, if the seller wants to increase the sales he has to decrease the price so that is the that is why those two curves are sloping downwards mr is the marginal revenue curve okay now the next thing is now he knows that uh, the seller is facing the downward sloping curve now the seller has to decide the output as well as the price okay so how much output see the seller can uh, what the seller does the seller keeps on increasing the output so initially the seller might so this is the average revenue and marginal revenue initially the seller wants to produce one unit of output the seller wants to increasing to two units of output three units of output four units of output the seller can keep on increasing the level of output isn't it at what point of time he has to stop the output okay so how much or in put it in very very simply how much output the seller wants to sell in the market that is the first thing he has to decide so that will be decided based on the marginal cost that's why see if the seller wants to produce one more unit he has to incur additional cost isn't it so why the producer is selling is one more unit because the seller knows that if he or she sells the additional unit in the market additional revenue he or she can get so what the seller will do as long as the additional revenue is more than additional cost the seller will keep on producing so at this point of time before q you can see that the marginal cost is great lesser than marginal revenue so the producer is getting more revenue so the producer will keep on increasing the output and selling the commodity in the market at point e you can see that marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue okay but beyond uh, uh, output q you can see that see this is the marginal cost isn't it beyond q you can see that the marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue the producer say suppose if the producer wants to produce oq1 amount of output so then the marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue the producer will incur losses so that is the condition equilibrium so what you have to do so uh, first average revenue curve next is uh, marginal revenue curve after drawing the marginal revenue curve then what you have to draw you have to draw the marginal cost curve so the first and foremost what the seller wants to uh, decide is the how much output he or she wants to produce so now marginal cost curve that is step 3 so this is the mar marginal cost curve will always be u shaped like this okay this is the marginal cost curve so this is step 3 after 
uh, so now the seller knows what is the marginal revenue and what is the marginal cost so the seller will decide how much output he wants to produce so now mark the equilibrium point where mc equals mr now this is step 4 okay so after marking the equilibrium so this equilibrium point indicates what this equilibrium point indicates the seller uh, that wants to the seller will be in equilibrium position when the seller produces and sells oq amount of output so mark oq here so now this is step 5 okay now the next is we have to know at this when the output is oq we have to know whether the seller is making extra profit or what is the price he has to fix okay seller has decided based on additional cost and additional revenue the seller has decided oq amount of output so now what is the price the seller has to fix for the oq amount of output now extend this line to average revenue curve average revenue is equal to price okay so extend this line to average revenue curve that is point mark the point a so now this will be step six so marking point a will be step six so q a is the price so since anyway we are representing price in the y axis connect this line to p mark the point y axis mark the point as p now this will be step seven now what we have understood the seller has decided he or she will sell oq amount of output and the price the seller is going to fix for that oq amount of output is equal to op okay now at this op whether the seller is earning normal profits abnormal profits or losses okay so that will be decided based on average cost okay so i repeat again just i will mention to you here two things you have to understand output is decided based on mc is equal to mr okay that's all output the seller is deciding the output profits losses are decided based on average revenue and average cost okay so if ar is average revenue is price if ar is greater than average cost that is price is greater than average cost the producer is getting extra profits okay if ar is equal to average cost the producer is getting normal profits and if ar is that is price is lesser than average cost the producer is incurring losses. so output is decided by marginal cost and marginal revenue profits or losses are decided by average revenue and average cost okay so now we have seen that the producer has decided what is the output he is going to sell and what is the price he is going to fix now we have to know at this level of price whether the producer is getting profits or losses for that we have to know the average cost see we have already found out what is the average revenue what is the marginal revenue what is the marginal cost now what is that what is the thing we need now we need average cost now so after fixing um, uh, marking the point p the next step step uh, will be step 8 will be you have to draw the average cost for the time being let us assume this is the average cost now this is step 8 okay now draw the average cost as i have drawn in the diagram okay now average cost then the next step is mark the point b that is step 9 mark the point b that will be step 9 so this point b denotes q b is the cost per unit b because b is the point the output line is intersecting the average cost at point b so that indicates bq is the cost the producers incurring for qth unit of output now what is the average revenue the seller is getting ab aq so 
A Q is the revenue the seller is getting. B Q is the cost the seller is incurring. Now what is happening here? A B is the extra profit. for qth level of output so only for qth level of output the seller is getting the extra profit or equal to ab okay now what is the total extra profit the seller will be getting see what is the total for total oq level of output how much extra profit the seller is getting so see total cost is uh, cost multiplied by output is the total cost revenue uh, price multiplied by output is the total revenue now you can see that the total connect then after drawing the step 9 then the step 10 will be can I extend this to y axis mark point c so that will be step 10 okay so step 10 will be from B to so now we know that O C so O C B Q that is equal to total cost and what is the total revenue O P A Q O P A Q that happens to be total revenue so what is the extra profit is getting the seller is getting then this is the shade area mark this shaded area now this is step 11 so mark whichever the area the shaded area write that as extra profit so p a b c is the so this point p a b c is the extra profit the seller is getting p a b c so this is the extra profit the seller is getting so that is the uh, understand so this is the answer also so the same thing the explain if you are coming to the explanation the same thing and you have to mention it in the words so in the above diagram you can understand that ar and mr are the downward sloping average and marginal revenue curves respectively ac is the average cost curve and mc is the marginal cost curve e is the point of equilibrium where mc cuts mr from below OP is the price and OQ is the equilibrium output. So, all this we have found out. So, we can see it is clear from the above diagram that at OQ level of output, we have found out that average revenue AQ is more than average cost BQ, isn't it? So, that is what it is. AQ, average revenue AQ is more than average cost BQ. So, we have already found out that. Then, hence the extra profit per unit of output is equal to AR minus AC that is equal to AB. The total extra profit earned by the monopolies at OQ level of output at OP price is equal to TR minus TC that is uh, TR is equal to OP AQ that is the total revenue. Total cost is OC BQ and TR minus TC we are arriving at the shaded area PA BC. So the conclusion is Therefore, the total extra profit earned by the monopolies is equal to the shaded area PABC. Okay. Now, this is the answer. 10 marks answer. So, practice the diagram. So, when you practice the diagram, along with this, you will also understand the explanation of the answer also. Okay. So, if you have any doubts, please mention it in the comment box. Okay. And up to here, this is the LAQ 10. So, up to here. So, uh, definitely from these 10 units 99 percent or even 100 percent three questions you will be able to attempt in the board exam okay but anyways you cannot stop studying only with the 10 questions you have to prepare the extra answers also so the next 10 marks question will be from national income chapter which i will be explaining to you in my next class okay so if you have any doubts in this answer i repeat again please mention it in the comment box if you want me to explain the diagram again please mention it in the comment box okay so otherwise if you find this video useful please like share and also subscribe to my youtube channel okay so until my next class take care bye bye